Right, um, hi everyone. I thought I'd do a movie on, um, or video, <laughs> on how to uh, install a... Well, not really how to install it. I'll explain it, but I can't show you because it's already done. But a double DIN aftermarket unit in an Audi B5. Um, when I started with this exercise, it was actually about three or four months ago already, I couldn't find any information or videos on YouTube on how to do it. Um, my car had a single DIN setup over here with a factory fitted concert radio and the problem with that was that I couldn't just go ahead and fit a double DIN unit in here. I had to change the entire center console. Um, as you can see my ignition's on, so all my lights on. Um, so, starting down here, what I had to do is, I had to replace this entire console um, because the one for a single uh, DIN is different to the one with a double DIN because there are screws here, and screws there, and screws down here that hold the radio cage or bracket onto this whole thing. Um, well, actually, this connects to the radio cage. So, the first thing that you have to do is you have to get one of these. If you don't have a double DIN set up, if you do, well, then you got your life made easy for you. Mine was a little bit more difficult because I had to replace this wood trim. It's different on a double DIN unit because of the fact that the ashtray sits lower down um, on a double DIN unit. And I had to also get a, a new ashtray. Um, it's actually a used one off a scrap car, which I bought on eBay. Um, but even used parts on eBay are not cheap for these cars. I also had to replace the uh, climate control system. Uh, just move the gear shift out the way here. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, it thought I was in uh, reverse for a moment. Um, and I had to replace this climate control system because it's different on a double DIN unit because this one also sits lower down. Um, the old climate control was sitting about here and the ashtray was sitting about here and there was this huge gaping space over here for you to throw keys and, and all kinds of things and quite frankly um, I think it's stupid throwing keys and stuff down here because what it does is it scratches your wood veneer and it really just looks tacky at the end of the day. Um, then I had to buy a metric kit. This radius around here is part of the metric kit. Um, there are brackets. You get the, the the surround here for the radio is also part of this metric kit that you get. But I had to take a file and basically file this surround um, to make it fit this particular radio or DVD player because. Um, you know, I don't really know what a standard size double DIN is, but this system was a little bit bigger. It's got a 6.2 inch screen, so, you know, I suppose it is a little bit bigger than your standard double DIN setup. Um, but not that much. But I had to file quite a bit off the top here, and quite a bit off the bottom as well, to get the, the dash trim surround to clip in here. And what I did is I actually assembled the metric kit to the radio, bolted everything on, and the metric kit's fantastic because it just slips right into that radio cage, the original factory radio cage. Um, there are two grooves on the sides here inside the radio cage. They, they're long, they stretch in, and the metric kit has two clips that actually uh, protrude out, and those just glide very nicely in, and there are two big clips um, on this kit here, over here, and two down here, and they clip into um, the radio cage of uh, the car. Um, I didn't have to change anything here, I just took all the stuff out of my car and put them onto the radio cage of the new one, and my uh, wood trim that was on my car before just fitted and slotted perfectly onto the radio cage that I bought on eBay. So basically, you need, if you've got a single DIN set up in your car right now and you want to have something like this, you are going to have to replace this dash trim center console. You're going to have to replace your wood trim 
um, surround, your gear shifter surround, and if you've got a, a manual car, you're going to have to get one for a manual car as well. Um, <laughs> the cover on my ashtray doesn't quite match my wood trim, but I've ordered a, uh, a dark burl walnut um, ashtray cover, so I'm just going to replace that out. I couldn't find one at the time when I bought my ashtray on eBay, but I've managed to find just the cover, not the whole ashtray. So, you know, you just open the ashtray up and the cover actually clips off and you just clip a new one on. But you've got to replace the ashtray, you've got to replace um, your climate control, um, which you can get on eBay as well. Um, they're normally about $120 around there. I got this one for about $110. Um, the ashtray cost me um, in the region of, um, I think it was $80 for the whole thing. Um, but the cover will only set you back about $20 or so. Um, the surround, the, the, the dash um, center console uh, surround, that cost me about $110 without shipping. And then the metric kit, I uh, can't really remember how much that was. Uh, I think it was about $30 or $28 or something like that. Um, so if you not used to working in dollars, then just find a good currency converter on, on Google and and check how much that's actually going to cost you in your um, currency. Now the unit cost me $330. That was excluding shipping, but all in all, um, you know, with shipping and customs duties, import duties, it cost me about $420 in total for the, the head unit. Now, um, in addition to all of this, I had to buy a uh, wiring harness adapter for the Audi A4 B5. Um, now, they're pretty much all the same, but I bought one specifically for the 99 to 2001 model because my car is a facelift. Um, my car is a 99 model, so it came out, the facelift had just come out at that time. So, um, for that reason, my dash is slightly different than the older models. Um, if you have an older model, Audi, you know, before 99 model or prior to 99, your ashtray setup and everything will be different down here. And um, there are actually dash kits available for that car. But, um, you know, this is specifically for those of you who have a 99 to 2001 model. Um, I don't have an S4 or anything, mine's just 2.4 V6. Um, and it's really, it's not a powerful car, but it's a very nice sounding car. Um, so I had to buy a wiring harness, uh, which I hooked up to this head unit. And that wiring harness comes with three plugs and you just plug them into the wiring loom of your car. No need to cut any wires. Um, the only thing that I, I found was that the radio it wasn't working on my car. I'm just going to power it up here and you can see I've loaded my Audi logo on there. Um, it comes pre-loaded with logos for whichever car you've got and there are, there are a few that it doesn't cover. I think Jeep, Jeep is not covered. Um, Chrysler is covered and Chevrolet and, and Ford and all those um, you know typical cars that people drive. Um, it doesn't take too long to to boot up. Uh, there you can see it's, it's booted up and now it's preparing my external storage which basically is my SD card which is slotted in here and there it's playing already. So um, you can hear the sounds pretty good. So the sound is pretty good on, on this car and um, when you're playing from an SD card or a USB or even through your iPod, this is the interface you're going to get. Um, it's not a bad interface, you can scroll through your music over here. Um, I've got a crap load of Ethereal Universe loaded on here. Um, you can also press a mix button because I've, I've got approximately 800 songs on my SD card. Uh, it's a 32 gig SD card and that's the biggest SD card that this system can take. And um, I've got about 800 songs on there and there's still quite a bit of space for apps and all sorts of other things that the head unit would like to store on your SD card. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't recommend just ripping the SD card out there. First, 
um, go into your settings, unmount the SD card and then remove it because you could damage the SD card and any apps that you've downloaded and saved to the SD card. So, um, and I'm speaking from experience here. I had to format mine because I just hauled it out there, loaded some more music, stuck it back in and then some of my apps weren't working. So, um, the other nice thing about this is that um, it's got a nav button here and what I've done is I've actually just incidentally I've hooked the lights. You, you can see the lights are not working on the buttons and that is because I've changed the setting on my head unit so that when I switch on my headlights the lights um, switch on. So um, and you can see it's pretty bright. At night um, they're pretty bright. They, they match um, my my car's interior lights quite well actually. Um, it looks pretty standard, almost factory-like in a way. Um, the nav that came with this unit was iGo. Now I'm I'm not going to berate iGo. Um, I think I've still left it on here. Uh, yeah, there it is there. iGo. But I went for um, Cedric which is down here. And the only reason I've done that is because I'm from South Africa and iGo does not um, cater for South Africa. So when I loaded, I pressed the nav button, um, I go boot it up as it normally would and it basically showed me sitting in the middle of a field and I was in my garage. So um, I couldn't get it to work and I thought well you know, by the way there is my sat nav um, aerial and I thought maybe the aerial wasn't working uh, or that something was wrong. So um, the antenna was actually functional. And what it turned out to be was the actual um, sat nav that I was using. But when you press the, the nav button over there, um, it will automatically load iGo because that is what it's set for. So I downloaded Sigic and I then went into the settings of the head unit and I've set the button so that when I press the nav button um, Sigic loads up and uh, it's busy loading now in fact see it loads up and it basically shows me where I am and it works very well because Sigic is fantastic actually um, I it's extremely accurate um, it has all in fact, what it does is at night, it changes the whole screen to night view and it dims the, the screen for you automatically in addition to the system dimming the screen as well. So you don't have this glare, you know, while you're driving at night. And you can still play your music in the background. Um, in fact, let's just go home and press play. And we can go back to nav and you can listen to your music while um, while driving and navigating so it's pretty good and it's um, I found Sigic there you can see it's got all the um, I live in Utenegg as, as you can see and it's got all the uh, points of interest over there um, now you can also change your nav screen on Sigic um, you can have uh, a meter over here which shows you how fast you're driving in addition to showing you down here. Um, it also has a little meter which shows you how strong your signal is but there I can see how strong my signal is. Oh, let's go back. There I can see how strong my signal is. You can see it's working all the time and this is basically your, your menu. If You can either press that button there for your menu or you can press the menu button over there and if I press that button it brings up the sat nav menu. So it's all integrated very very well. I, I, I really can't complain. I'm just gonna exit this. Um, and I'm sitting in my garage and my car is currently, or the, <laughs> the head unit is currently hooked up to the Wi-Fi in the house. So any apps that need updating will automatically update um, while the car is in the garage or in the driveway. Um, and you can actually use any one of these apps over here um, to to um, to navigate your way around what you want to do. Your first one you've got is your radio, you've got nav, 
you got your music which is from the SD card which is different to music playing from a compact disc you've got your video and that is also different to um, a DVD playing on a compact disc the video I haven't really tried that out I've tried to put a few videos on the SD card but this SD card just won't let me store any videos on there so I don't know I think it's got something to do with the SD card and not the head unit um, there is a video on there already that comes preloaded uh, it's basically a, a music song and as you can see it's not a full screen you can't change it to full screen um, so uh, I'm just going to press that. So I, I don't really understand the the use of that anyway. Um, you've got your iPod. Um, now I've actually stored, as you can see, I've got my 3G dongle, uh, my Wi-Fi dongle, and I've got my 3G dongle um, inside my um, my glove compartment. And the reason I did that is because. Um, I don't really want it dangling down here in the footwell of the car um, and it doesn't really make a noise or rattle when you go over bumps and stuff I haven't found that um, I'm quite fussy when it comes to bumps um, in my car or, or rattles and, and squeaks in my car so um, when going over bumps so um, I haven't heard anything yet so it hasn't really been necessary to to change that setup you've got your auxiliary in over here which is basically for your USB um, over there um, and you've got your disc which is for your DVD or your compact disc now I don't have a disc in here right now but I've basically hooked this system up so that when I'm driving I can actually watch DVDs or videos or basically do anything I want um, while driving not that I drive around looking at watching videos um, but it's so that my passengers can at least enjoy something. I don't have a disc in here at the moment because it doesn't really bother me um, playing a disc but if someone wants to play a disc while I'm busy driving they can do that. Um, this is basically the background that I loaded for my car. Um, you can download any background you want. You can put in live backgrounds. Now this is basically the, the sort of graphic user interface that you're going to see standard but if you press the little button down there, that arrow, um, it will basically give you all of your apps that you've got and you know you can see it's got a video manual, it's got video, um, there's your iPhone, Bluetooth, the Bluetooth works very well, it's got a mic over there and the Bluetooth works extremely well. I've called a couple of people from the car and they can hear me clearly and I can hear them and their voices play through the speakers of the car. Over here you've got your settings um, and there you've got your Wi-Fi. Um, there you can see <laughs> it's got a uh, quite a few Wi-Fi uh, quite a few Wi-Fi uh, signals that it's picking up. You know you can either press the back button there or you can press the back button over here. Um, you can change pretty much anything here and if you go into general and you go into I've done an uh, MCU update I don't know no I don't want to do it I've done an MCU update I don't know what that is um, but it says MCU update I've done one uh, but I don't know what it does I've done a system update and that obviously updates the system um, if you hit extra settings you can hit a code in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Done. Okay. It takes you to another another um, hidden um, menu, which uh, oh, that's the brake setting. So your brake setting, I've actually looped mine on the wiring of the car so that um, <laughs> so that I can watch DVDs while I'm driving, but. Um, or that so that anyone in the car can do it while I'm driving um, but you can set it here you can make it speed sensitive you can just leave it open or you can leave it closed I've just haven't bothered with this because um, on my wiring I grounded the parking brake to the ground wire behind the system when I hooked everything up so you know it's basically it thinks that it's open all the time you got your um, radio region, your panel keys, um, you've got your TV mode, your TV norm, 
uh, panel light setting which I've already showed you, panel light color already showed you. Now the panel light setting this is basically where I set um, to follow headlight so if I switch the headlights off the lights on the sound system go off. You can switch SD cards um, now when you do that it will take all your apps on your SD card transfer them onto your head unit then allow you to put your new SD card in and transfer them back. Um, you can disable your nav audio, uh, key update, APK update, I don't know what all this stuff is but I really don't care. Um, here's the logo setting and this only appeared oddly enough after I did um, just get that so that you can actually see. Um, I only got that after I did an update. It wasn't there and I was wondering how do I get the Audi logo to appear and there you can see all the logos you know coming up. Um, you can have I mean that's the one I've got now but you can have Mer Mercedes, Citroen, Nissan, Volkswagen, anything you want. So um, I've set mine to Audi and it says complete press the back button and there we go. So um, you can say shut down delay, you've got your nav application settings, steering wheel settings, um, basically everything that you have in a car this system can do. I mean if you've got steering wheel controls you can hook them up to this head unit. Um, you know I had three criteria when I was looking for a sound system or you know to upgrade and that was that I could play my music, my mp3s on an SD card, um, that um, I had navigation and a backup camera. Now I've hooked a backup camera onto this head unit and you'll see that when I put the car, okay, just make sure the car is on, as soon as I've moved the shifter into R, um, it'll basically show you the rear of the car and that's my driveway um, out of my garage. So, um, and it's pretty good I must say, uh, you know, um, I don't necessarily like the camera that's on the car. Um, I'm thinking of changing the camera but um, it's got night vision and everything and it works very well. The only problem I find is that when it's raining um, and all the water on the back of the car splashes up, you know, from the spray, uh, you have to get out and clean the camera before you can use it, so <laughs> it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but anyway. Um, so, that's basically it. Now, the other thing that I just want to mention is, if we go to radio, this is the radio interface, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Uh, I haven't even bothered to set this in because all I'm hearing is static. Now, the reason I'm hearing static is because my car has a boosted antenna in the back window. And when I hooked this whole setup, I didn't realize that I had to buy a... Uh, because when you buy an aftermarket sound system, you have to buy a antenna adapter. And I bought an antenna adapter, but not one for a boosted antenna. So I have ordered one now on eBay. And when that comes, I'll have to haul this whole setup back out again and change that around and hook the blue wire that comes out of the antenna ad uh, adapter and hook that up to my 12 volt constant supply so that um, the aerial is actually picking up a boost um, and when I do I'll be able to get some radio stations. It does pick up radio stations when I'm out of the garage um, it's not too bad but it's a bit crackly and you know when you go under a bridge you just lose radio completely um, not that I really worry about radio too much. Um, you know, you can load Pandora on you if you want to, and then, you know, hook up your uh, Wi Fi. You can tether it to your Android phone. Now, I've got an Android phone which I bought, um, and by the way, this head unit I bought it on AliExpress. It's a, a website called um, AliExpress, A L I E X P R E. SS, um, dot com and I'd say AliExpress is kind of like the Chinese version of eBay 
I don't have the app on here, but I've got it on my phone. I must still download it. Um, and in fact, if I go and do a search now on the Google Play Store, I'll be able to find it. Um, you can see my car is currently hooking up to the... Uh, if I type in here, it's hooking up to the Wi-Fi. AliExpress. And you can see there it comes up with a suggestion for the app. Um, I don't really want to load this on my car, but uh, because just now, if I take my car into Audi Center for a service and the guys are playing around there, they could be ordering stuff on my account. Um, so you've got to be careful what you load on your. Um, so you can install that that app on here as well. But basically, um, AliExpress, you can find anything you want on there from Android phones to Android car systems to jewelry, watches, car parts you name it, you can find it all on there and it's really a fantastic website unlike eBay, everything on, on AliExpress is made in China I suppose and it's all new um, whereas on eBay you can buy anything used or new um, now eBay also have these head units on there the same guys that are advertising on AliExpress they're also putting their stuff on eBay and I've noticed that on eBay they charge a little bit of a premium on, on eBay um, I don't know if they, they reckon they can get away with it, uh, you know, since more American people are using eBay.com. Um, I use eBay.com. I prefer it to any of the other eBays. Um, and I buy a lot of stuff from America anyway. So um, I like the US version. and uh, But I find that these guys advertise their stuff on, on uh, eBay at a premium. And buying direct on AliExpress which is a uh, consumer division of a website called Alibaba um, but Alibaba you have to buy like a minimum quantity of 10 or 3 or 5 or whatever I'm not interested in having 5 of these units so um, I went to AliExpress and I bought one and I used DHL um, it cost me another $65 to use DHL um, and I recommend that you, if you buy anything on AliExpress, unless you're prepared to wait two months for it to arrive, then rather pay the extra money and have it um, sent with a courier so that you can actually track it. And within three days, my unit was here. Um, okay, lay in my closet for a while because um, I just didn't get around to getting all the parts that I needed to set this unit up. So if you already have a double DIN setup in your car, all you need is the metro kit and you need one of these um, and you need a wiring harness and you need a boosted antenna um, adapter and you'll basically be able to fit it um, it took me to fit this unit will probably take uh, excluding doing the camera will probably take you um, the best part of a half hour to do um, it took me two hours to pull the whole dash and center console uh, to take all this stuff out the, the armrest the handbrake had to come off um, this whole center console had to come off this whole thing had to come off um, this wood grain had to come off all the stuff over here had to come off I had to swap all the stuff around uh, no I don't want to do a GPS test the screen's ext extremely sensitive um, I'm not sure if this is a I think this is a, a capacitive screen I'm not sure um, but it is very sensitive I took the plastic protection off here and there's a lot of fingerprint marks on my screen so I don't really uh, like that and I think what I'll be doing is um, getting a screen protector for the screen um, just to protect the actual screen it's a glass screen so um, you know it can weather you know anything the weather throws at it um, so yeah I'm good, probably gonna put a, a screen protector on there and um, you'll see when I switch it off um, you can see all the fingerprint marks on on the unit so so basically this is what it looks like when you've installed it in your car and, and it's it looks very nice um, I like it and I'm very happy with it um, everything works extremely well and I actually thought that I would have hassles with either the GPS not working or the sat nav or maybe the compact disc not working or the DVD player not working 
Um, the nice thing is that it actually has a DVD button over here. So in addition to your buttons here, so you've got your radio button here, you've got your phone button there. Uh, just see if we can get in there. You've got radio, you've got forward, backwards, you've got phone, you've got uh, nav, you've got back, menu, home. And then your DVD button and your um, button to spit out your compact disc. Now when you press DVD, it'll just switch to DVD and play the DVD in full screen um, like it would on any cinema and if you press the menu button like with your sat nav the menu button will work with any menu in any application that you happen to be in at the time so if you're in the sat nav and you press the menu button it'll bring up the sat nav menu if you're in dvd mode and you press the menu button it'll bring up the menu for dvds um, if you are in radio mode and you press the menu button it'll bring you up uh, it'll bring up a menu for radio and where to store your various radio stations and if you press the phone button you press menu it'll bring up all your contacts and um, and all that so I think it's very neat um, and also likewise if you in your SD card and you press menu it'll bring up the root folder for the SD card and all the folders in there so it's a very very good system very nice very happy with it I'd highly recommend buying one of these if you're even thinking of doing it. I highly recommend you buying one. Um, and like I said, try AliExpress, but do check out what they're charging for shipping charges because that will affect the price. Compare them to eBay because um, sometimes they offer free shipping on eBay, but then you're going to have to wait a long ass time before it arrives. So if you're impatient like me and you want it in a rush, rather um, have them ship it with a courier like DHL or FedEx or something like that or uh, UPS um, and uh, you know I found that the, the, the Chinese people selling these units are extremely accommodating um, they, they really do go the extra mile for you and buying on AliExpress like I did I bought many stuff even my phone I've got a six inch Android phone which is about the size of the screen here um, which I bought on there and it I've had it for a year and three months now and it's working great I've never had any hassles with it the battery's fantastic um, and it works like a normal Samsung Galaxy S5 uh, or even a Samsung Galaxy Note um, and the cameras are very good it's 30 megapixel camera so that system that Android phone that I've got integrates perfectly with the system here because everything's Bluetooth the two sync with each other and when you use um, Wi-Fi tethering on your phone with the Wi-Fi dongle which I have here um, you know it says Wi-Fi dongle in it there or something something link um, while you're driving in your car um, you can set your phone to tether um, to tethering mode and obviously your phone's Bluetooth must be on in order to do that and the head unit uh, must be on Bluetooth as well in order to do that but your head unit will then connect to your phone um, you must just check on your phone what your Wi-Fi password is and hook that up to the head unit over here so I've got basically my phone and two Wi-Fi's hooked up um, that we have here in the house hooked up to this head unit so um, no matter where I am, I can have connectivity to the internet while I'm uh, in my car. So um, if you happen to be at a shopping center or you're driving uh, somewhere, first park obviously before you do that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that while driving. But you can, and you feel like going to a movie, you can, you know, go on the internet, check what movies there are, and go and catch a movie. Um, if you want to look at what restaurants there are around you, you can use the nav to do that or you can go on the internet um, and, you know, or go on Google search using your GPS location um, and you can do searches that way. Um, so, <laughs> either that or you can just use your phone. Um, that would probably be a, a, your best bet. Um, so, yeah, you can hook up a... Um, like I've shown you here, there's a, a, US, a mini USB port over there. You can hook up, um, I've got a USB cable, so you can hook up anything, any external device, storage device on here as well if you want. Um, or if you have a memory stick that has a mini USB connection, you can hook that up there too. So, um, that's about it in a nutshell. And um, 
I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, then, you know, drop me a line, um, and I will try and answer you as soon as I can. Cheers.